a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Jeff Flake Jeffrey Lane Flake is an American politician serving as the senior United States Senator from Arizona, a seat he was first elected to in 2012. A member of the Republican Party, he was a member of the U.S. House of Representatives from 2001 to 2013. Flake was one of the bipartisan Gang of Eight that pushed through a Senate immigration reform bill in 2013. He is known as a vocal critic of President Donald Trump, but votes overwhelmingly in line with Trump's position. Flake announced on October 24, 2017, that he would not seek re-election in 2018. He became Arizona's senior U.S. Senator upon the death of John McCain. Early life, education and early career Jeffrey Lane Flake was born in Snowflake, Arizona, the son of Noe writer and Dean Meiser Flake. His birth town was named in part for his great-great-grandfather, Mormon pioneer William J. Flake. Flake obtained a Bachelor of Arts in International Relations and a Master of Arts in Political Science from Brigham Young University. He took a two-year leave of absence to serve as a Mormon missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in South Africa in the early 1980s. He speaks Afrikaans. He worked in the public affairs sector after college and was the executive director of the Foundation for Democracy in Namibia and executive director of the Goldwater Institute before entering the House of Representatives. He opposed economic sanctions on South Africa in the 1980s, arguing that sanctions would harm the black population who were already suffering under apartheid policies. Elections Flake was first elected to Congress in 2000 from what was then the 1st District, after Republican incumbent Matt Salmon stepped down to honor a self-imposed term limit. The district, which included most of the East Valley, was then renumbered as the 6th District as Arizona gained two congressional seats, because of the results of the 2000 census. Flake easily defeated his primary challenger, in his campaign in 2000. Flake had pledged to serve no more than three terms in Congress which would see him serve no later than January 2007, shortly after being elected for a third time. Flake announced in early 2005 that he had changed his mind on pledging term limits and was planning to run for re-election in 2006. It was a mistake to limit my own terms, Flake said, in that same election. Three out of five mayors in his home district opposed his re-election because, according to Flake, he did not bring pork barrel spending to the mayor's cities. In 2006, several Democrats had announced their intention to run for the seat, but only one met the June filing deadline, and that particular filing was rejected due to an insufficient number of nominating signatures. I did expect to have a primary opponent. I deserve one, Flake said, referring to the term limit pledge which he had broken. By all rights, I ought to have an opponent. I just got lucky, I guess. In the 2006 midterm elections, Flake had no Democratic Party opponent and easily defeated the Libertarian Party candidate, Jason Blair, with 74% of the vote. 2012 election in February 2011, Flake announced that he was running for the U.S. Senate seat being vacated by the retiring Senate minority whip John Kyle in 2012. Flake easily won the Republican nomination against real estate businessman Will Cardin. He faced former Surgeon General Richard Carmona, who sought office for the first time in the general election, in May 2012. Flake led Carmona by 13 points in the polls. In an October 2012 poll by Public Policy Polling, Flake was trailing Carmona by two points, after the race tightened. The Wall Street Journal criticized a controversial Flake ad that accused Carmona of having issues with anger, with ethics, and with women. Flake was endorsed by the Casa Grande Dispatch. United States Chamber of Commerce, the Senate Conservatives Fund, and the Club for Growth. 
Flake defeated Democratic Richard Carmona 49-46% on November 6, 2012. He won mainly on the strength of carrying Maricopa County, home to Phoenix and 60% of the state's population, by 77,200 votes, more than the overall margin of 67,900 votes. He also benefited from Mitt Romney carrying the state by 10 points in the presidential election. 2017 Congressional Shooting Flake was on the field during practice for the annual congressional baseball game when the congressional baseball shooting happened on June 14, 2017. He said the attendees were like, sitting ducks, and that it was likely that the Capitol Police saved their lives all of a sudden, we heard a very loud shot. Everybody thought sounds like a gun. The gunman was over by the third base dugout, with a clear view of the field, and everybody on it. A lot of us dove into the dugout and tried to get as many as we could, but at that point, there was firing behind us from the security detail, the Capitol Police, and I started yelling back. Are you friendly? Making sure that it was our guy, because we didn't know if there were other shooters that had us surrounded and were coming into the dugout. Former President Obama called Flake that morning to extend his best wishes and prayers for the victims. Flake had flown with Obama from Washington, D.C. to Arizona in 2011 after the shooting of then-Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. Bipartisan Survival Trip Flake used his experience surviving in the wild for six days with a Democratic senator to develop an idea to end partisan gridlock in Washington. In 2014, Flake and U.S. Senator Martin Heinrich were featured on a Discovery Channel reality TV show, Rival Survival, where the two stayed on a small Micronesian island for six days. Flake later joked during a speech at the National Press Club that sending both Senate leaders to a remote island together might reduce partisanship and allow more legislation to move forward. Committee Assignments Political Positions Jeff Flake has used the phrase, traditionally conservative Republican, to describe his political preference. The nonpartisan National Journal published an analysis of his 2013 voting record and gave him a composite ideological score of 65% conservative and 35% liberal. The New York Times used an analysis of the Senate's ideological composition and ranked Flake as the fourth most conservative senator in 2017. The American Conservative Union gives Flake a lifetime 93% conservative score and the fiscally conservative Americans for Prosperity gave Flake a 98% lifetime score. The American Civil Liberties Union An organization focused on civil rights and liberties gave Flake a 53% rating in 2014 and a 35% rating in 2016. Budget and Economy Flake is a fiscal conservative, and a critic of government waste and advocates reducing federal spending. He was described by columnist Robert Novak as an insistent reformer. Flake is a signer of the Taxpayer Protection Pledge and one of eight House members to receive a 100% approval rating from the American Conservative Union. A. Scourge of Pork Barrel Spending Flake was ruled the least profligate spender in Congress by Citizens Against Government Waste in July 2007 and designated a taxpayer superhero. In 2008, Flake voted against the Troubled Asset Relief Program. Flake is known for his ardent opposition to earmarks. He has been called an anti-earmark crusader and frequently challenges earmarks proposed by other members of Congress. Since May 2006, he has become prominent with the Flake Hour, a tradition at the end of spending bill debates in which he asks Seamark sponsors to come to the House floor and justify why taxpayers should pay for their pet projects. He is credited with prompting House rule changes to require Seamark sponsors to identify themselves. Until September 2010, Flake issued a press release listing an egregious Seamark of the Week every Friday. Usually the earmark will be followed by Flake making a humorous comment. As an example, Rep. 
Flake once said of Congressman Jose Serrano's $150,000 earmark to fix plumbing in Italian restaurants. I would argue this is one cannoli the taxpayer doesn't want to take a bite of. The earmark of the week releases were ended and replaced with the So Just How Broke Are We? series of releases in March 2010. The House Appropriations Committee implemented rules to ban earmarks to for-profit corporations, a change Flake supported. This is the best day we've had in a while, he said to the New York Times, which reported that approximately 1,000 such earmarks were authorized in the previous year, worth $1.7 billion. In September 2018, Flake was among six Republican senators, Mike Lee, Pat Toomey, Rand Paul, David Perdue, and Ben Sass, as well as Bernie Sanders, that voted against a $854 billion spending bill, meant to avoid another government shutdown. Said bill included funding for the Departments of Defense, Health, and Human Services. Labor and Education Disaster Aid In 2012, it was reported that Flake had on at least five occasions voted against legislation intended to prevent natural disasters and provide aid to those harmed by natural disasters. In 2005, Flake was one of only 11 House representatives to vote against a bill providing supplemental emergency funds to handle damage from Hurricane Katrina. Environment on December 2, 2014, the Senate passed the Bill Williams River Water Rights Settlement Act. The bill would put an end to a fight over water rights in the Bill Williams River watershed in Arizona. Flake introduced the Senate version of the bill along with Senator John McCain. The bill also helps the Wallapai Native American tribe, which uses water from the watershed. The bill would put a limit on the amount of water that a local mining company can use, and it would give legal recognition to the tribe's rights to the water source. At a House hearing on the bill in September 2014, in which both the Wallapai tribe and Freeport Minerals Company testified, both the tribe and the company agreed that the bill would provide each, and other interests, with benefits. The settlement would guarantee water rights for the tribe provide water for Freeport's mine in Baghdad, Arizona, and give the state of Arizona rights to a property area that would be used for a conservation program for several species. The Arizona Chamber of Commerce supported the legislation, saying, The settlement of water rights claims is a priority in our state in order to provide clarity and long-term certainty to all water users across Arizona. In 2014, the EPA announced that it would make some changes to the federal regulation of water. Two different cases that went before the Supreme Court resulted in the court ordering the EPA to specify which waterways in the U.S. are considered protected by the Clean Water Act. Flake and McCain sent a letter to the head of the EPA, citing a number of reasons why the regulation would hurt Arizona. One of the senator's concerns was about waterways that only flow in certain parts of the year. Flake and McCain believe that if the EPA includes those types of waterways in the new regulations, the regulations would have a negative effect on Arizona's agriculture industry. One of the reasons the EPA is using in deciding which waterways will fall under the new regulation is by concluding whether pollution in waterways will negatively affect other waters downstream. Flake and McCain asserted in their letter that little proof existed to back up such a conclusion, but the EPA responded by saying that the proposed regulation was carefully examined and was made with bipartisan input. Additionally, Flake and McCain wrote that the new changes could make it harder for Arizona firefighters to fight wildfires. Flake advocated against the rule for two primary reasons. First. Flake wrote that the EPA proposed rule did not make a distinction between waterways that flow all year or just part of the year. Flake said that 94% of Arizona's waterways do not flow continuously year-round, and argued that the lack of distinction in the rule would affect most of Arizona's waterways.
Second, Flake argued that the scientific evidence used by the EPA to back up the rule was anything but settled. Flake and McCain had written to the EPA administrator about their concerns earlier, on May 6, 2014. An editorial published by the Arizona Republic said that the EPA rule would have the effect of requiring the Cap Canal to treat drinking water twice, which would increase costs to Arizona residents. The editorial claims that the canal, and all water sources that go to people's homes, already have to meet Safe Drinking Water Act regulations. Despite Flake's efforts against the bill, however, it was signed into law by President Barack Obama on December 16, 2014. Foreign Policy Flake voted in favor of the Iraq Resolution in the House of Representatives in October 2002. In a debate on the House floor on the authorization of force, Flake said, we ought to let history be our guide here. But the most recent history in this case that we ought to look at is the vote that took place in this chamber 12 years ago. During that time, we faced a very similar decision. Should we thwart Saddam Hussein in his attempt to go beyond his boundaries or should we appease him? Fortunately, the majority of this body and the other body agreed we ought to thwart him. And I think we can all agree that, had we not done so, that the biological and chemical weapons that Saddam Hussein possesses would be added to nuclear weapons which he would certainly possess today had he not been thwarted at that time. We are in this position today, I would submit. Because we have no other choice. This is our only reasonable option. War will no doubt come at great cost. When we visit the war memorials, we see that cost, but the cost of appeasement is far greater. I commend the House leadership for bringing this resolution forward and for shepherding it through process. I especially commend our President who so forcefully pushed for this resolution, and who has so deliberately pushed for this resolution. I urge support for the resolution. After the 2006 election in which Republicans lost control of the House of Representatives largely due to the unpopularity of the war in Iraq. Flake changed his position on the Iraq war to one of cautious opposition, including voting against appropriations. At a 2008 congressional hearing featuring General David Petraeus, Flake said, I still have a hard time seeing the big picture and what constitutes success in Iraq. That's not just one side of the aisle with those kind of concerns. Many on this side of the aisle have that as well. Flake supported ending the Cuba trade embargo and otherwise normalizing relations with Cuba. Flake supported President Barack Obama's 2014 decision to begin the process of normalizing relations between the United States and Cuba, despite opposition to the policy change from other Republican senators. Flake joined Democrats Chris Van Hollen and Patrick Leahy on a trip to Cuba to return Alan Gross to the United States. Gross, an American aid worker, had been imprisoned in Cuba for five years, but was released as part of the agreement between Obama and Cuban leader Raul Castro. Flake believes that the United States embargo against Cuba is flawed, stating, The policy that we've had in place for the past 50 years has done more in my view, to keep the Castro regimes in power than anything we could have done. Flake has traveled to Cuba nine times, and supports loosening restrictions on Americans traveling to Cuba. Gun Control Issues On April 17, 2013, Flake joined 45 other senators in voting against the Manchin-Toomey Amendment, which would have required background checks on private gun sales. Following the vote, Flake was criticized for changing his position on background checks, just days before the vote. He had sent the mother of one of the Colorado theater shooting victims a handwritten letter stating that, strengthening background checks is something we agree on. In response to a question asking whether he was worried about potential political consequences vowed by gun control groups, Flake replied, that's the beauty of a six-year term. I truly want to do something on this. But what has been a little upsetting is to hear people try to maintain that we were just caving to pressure, discounting any issues that we had with the legislation.
with the language. That's just not right. Following his no vote, Flake's approval rating fell from 45% favorable 43% unfavorable to 32% favorable 51% unfavorable according to one poll, making him the most unpopular senator in America as of April 2013. In March 2013, he joined with Senators Lindsey Graham, Mark Begich and Mark Pryor in introducing a bill that would prevent people from buying guns who have used an insanity defense, were ruled dangerous by a court, or had been committed by a court to mental health treatment. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries Would you like to know more?